It's going to storm. Let's bring back uh, Jim Ouellette to the program. We, we're talking water. you got to talk with Jim Ouellette. Jim, good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Rob. Yeah, we had you on a couple of weeks ago. Yes. And I welcome you back here as well. We, we didn't get a chance when you were here last time talking about the water tables in Berkeley County and the distribution of water and such uh, to really get into some of the infrastructure improvements that are getting made and some of the projects and plans that you have for the future here in uh, Berkeley County, Jim. So uh, for those new to the program, tell everybody what your responsibility is. Well, the Berkeley County Water District uh, supplies water to 32,000 metered connections throughout our community. And our challenge these days is we're growing so fast with all the um, the growth here. And mm -hmm. I, I, I appreciate this opportunity this morning to share with our community all the things that are being done in order to meet the demands that are forthcoming. And and uh, a lot of people see the effects of growth with respect to roads and schools. You don't see the effect of growth on our water supply. It's basically out of sight. You don't notice it. As long as the tap is uh, full of water when you turn it on, everything mm -hmm. seems to be just fine. But like all the other infrastructures of our community, we are uh, engaged in a activity and a, a plan to be able to meet the demands of the future and we have uh, over a hundred million dollars as we speak of infrastructure underway with two new water plants or an expansion of water plants uh, many water uh, elevated water tanks needed to have the water out in the system so a lot of things going on and I just thought it'd be a, an opportunity because I get a lot of calls as I'm sure of the schools get calls and whatnot how are we letting all these folks come to town when we're already uh, challenged with respect to the ability to service them. So that's why I just, uh, it, and it, it is, a, it is a, a point that is uh, of, of concern because the district has not <clears throat> added any additional capacity for 15 years, yet the growth has continued significantly over those 15 years. So we're trying to catch up as well as set the table for the future. So hence the reason why mm -hmm. there's a lot of things going on a lot of activity, and I just wanted to share that with folks as we can to let them know that something's being done. Yeah. But the question in the interim is, is how fast do we allow it to grow until that foundation is established in order to support these? And that's, that's not, I, I don't have an answer. I'm just saying that yeah. it's a concern that we are faced with. These are the questions. Yeah, Jim, is the Water District asked by the Planning Commission prior to approval of a large subdivision? We are. We have to, uh, part of the process, as we say, we have the ability to serve it because we have water mains in the area. And that's more or less a regulatory requirement from the PSC that says, yeah, you're obligated to serve unless you have a, a very good reason why you can't. Yeah, I know that with some commercial ventures, uh, such as CMC and others, water was an, was an issue before the for uh, approved but for a large subdivision uh, has there been a subdivision disapproved or plans for subdivision disapproved because you said there was not sufficient water uh, there is one that was um, not allowed to move forward at this time because we don't have the adequate fire protection uh, in recent years we've more thoroughly applied the regulations that are on the books from the uh, health department with respect to how you calculate what is acceptable service to provide to a, a subdivision or any residential or commercial area. And it's an involved calculation that takes in a lot of considerations for the pipe size, the storage tanks, the pumping capacity, and then it determines whether or not you meet that demand. Well, you know, some cases we're in good shape, some areas and other areas we're not, and a lot of that's due to a lack of storage or adequately sized water mains to convey the water from where it is to where it needs to be during those times where it's, it's required. You've mentioned a couple of words. It's kind of easy to just pass over, but they, uh, they're quite very important. You, earlier you said plan ahead. And in the water, you, there's three components, if I may. One is the treatment one is the storage, one is the distribution. All three require a, a great deal of lead time. So I think the water district is, is to be applauded for the thought that you've given in years past and what you're given today to meet the sizable growth because I've not heard of any, uh, uh, any real deterrent to the growth because you folks did not do your job. 
And that's true, um, but, but the line between our capacity and the demand is shrinking until such time as we have this new water plant, which is predominantly the river yeah. plant, when that capacity gets expanded, then we will have an increased buffer between success and not success. And when is that to be completed, Jim? Well, we're hopeful sometime in early 2027. Um, it's underway. We started about three months ago with construction, but it's a it's a two-year-plus process, and then there's always delays in this world we live in nowadays with electronics and the uh, VFDs and things. We, we come to expect... Uh, undesirable information that says, oh, we've got to wait another six months. Sure. How was this project financed? Uh, through a combination of things. We did receive an $18 million grant for the river plant, and then we uh, borrowed the money from the Water De uh, Development Authority for the balance of a loan that we have to pay for it. How much would that have been? Uh, I think that was about, I think it's all $40 million altogether, mm -hmm. so $22 million. Refresh our memory, Jim. What's the time frame on this again? I know you've talked about it here before, but for the um, for the construction completion of the new plant. Well, the river plant. The river is, plant. That's a two year, maybe thirty month, two and a half year uh, completion. So we started this summer. So mm -hmm. winter of uh, is that winter of twenty seven? Or mm -hmm. yeah, so it's it's going to take some time. Um, the Bunker Hill plant we just started, that's going to be a 30-month process. Now, that plant is basically to replace an existing facility down there that was built back in the 50s, and it's long since uh, expired as far as its productive, not a productive, but its, uh, its efficiency and its equipment. Uh, but that's not going to add any more water. I see, not uh, yet. Uh, okay. Now, you have from the springs, the Lefevre Springs, do you have another source of water for the Bunker Hill plant? Uh, Admiral, we're actively engaged in trying to find some additional groundwater in that end of town in order to bring to the plant once it's available to treat it and then distribute it. Uh, our challenge right now is to find something in reasonable proximity that can be a sustainable supply and something we can get to the plant. Now as part of the construction of the new plant we are installing additional raw water lines out away from the plant so that when we find some more water we'll be better positioned to be able to bring that water to the plant in an efficient manner. But we don't, yeah. we don't, we don't, we're don't not have it there right yet, yeah. Yeah. which is a challenge. I saw that American water had been hacked recently in some way, and I think it affected 15 different states where the uh, issues occurred. Uh, what is your system of security locally, Jim? Well, we, um, you know, it's, I, I don't know if that was, uh, there's two variables. There's the operational component that's uh, the SCADA system, we call it the supervisory control and ac data acquisition. And that is um, pretty secure because it's important because that's when somebody can hack in and actually manipulate your pumps and your chemical feeds and things. So we have that um, pretty well locked down. And we also have, uh, we believe, a good system with regards to a firewall so people can't get into the customer's accounts, which are the ones that really are of concern to the and consumer. And I think that was the, that was the American water Correct. situation there, which is typically what happens. It's the customer in healthcare, the patients, the, yeah, it's, it's a nightmare is what it is. Yeah. So that's, uh, I, one other thing I, I'll bring up to you, they kind of express the importance of a water supply. Mm -hmm. This is something of interest that not everybody's aware of. If I was to ask to you, what is the single greatest activity which extended the longevity of human life, what would you think it might be? It was an event in time. The invention of fire. <laughs> First lightning bolt. I would, guess, I would guess potable water of some sort, right? Well, would that not be it? You're right, because why is that? I think about it, water is a common denominator in all of our public health. Yeah. We are the, that is one variable that inf affects everybody every day. And we actually produce a product that goes right in. You consume it. And now what was happening many, many years ago is the water supply of a community would get infected with, with infectious disease, pathogenic organisms. And the greatest single invention, if not an invention, but a, a determination and an addition of an element into our society was when we started to add chlorine mm -hmm. to the water supply. And when was this? It was the early 1900s. And Rob, I don't know if you want to have the obligatory a question if the animal was there. When, uh, <laughs> you you know. know, you could tell by just looking in his eyes that that was coming. He knows. Yeah. 
Yeah, that was that was the time. If you look at a graph and how long yeah. people would live, mm -hmm. it took off from there, and obviously it reached the pinnacle. And I, you know, it's now starting to decline. But it's uh, that was it because infectious disease was 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 a variable that killed most people. It's interesting because the things that I was reading about um, the um, you know the landfall of Milton and what communities are doing. I mean, they're shutting down water, sewer, I mean, so that's part and parcel of the reason for evacuation. Obviously, it's extremely dangerous, but all I could think of was, so you can't flush your commode, you can't use a sink, you can't take a shower, you can't, I mean, all those things. That I you mean, need water for, yeah. That you need water for. Um, so pretty uh, pretty phenomenal when you think about well, it. It's not just when you consume the water, but it's the other thing. The that other keeps things. The washing the hands, the, the flushing of the commodes. Mm -hmm. the, this is what keeps public health so at the level we're expecting it in this country. And we've done such a good job in the public water business through the years that people don't even realize don't think it. About it. Right. Yeah, Jim, in the city and a lot of the municipalities, they water and sewer are connected under one umbrella. In the county, that's not the case. Uh, you, we have a water district, we have a sewer district. Uh, if you will, speak to the relationship between the two. Well, we... we uh, it's it's limited. We are sep two separate legal entities. Uh, the only common denominator we really have is the fact that we send out a common bill, which was intended, I guess, to reduce the amount of mail that was sent when mm -hmm. back when mail was much more common than mm -hmm. the electronic versions of bills. So that's it. So that's that's our relationship. It's pretty limited. Mm -hmm. How does that work then? Do you have one billing? program system person who does it all because i would imagine that's a little sounds like it could be wonky yeah. well in the world of uh, sewer and water rates it's <laughs> predicated upon water usage so the water district owns the meters and we read the meters and we get the number of how much water you consume and your sewer bill is predicated upon the amount of water you use so we produce the bill on the water district side of the equation and then the sewer district is the one that is officially the payment office that you uh, go to uh, pay the bill. And, and then we have some rather complex uh, computers behind the scenes which try to decipher where those funds as they come in are distributed. And it works pretty well, uh, but it's one more layer of complication because of the combined uh, bill. And that did not happen overnight. That transition was a long, painful process trying to get a common bill. So, I can imagine. Yeah, I remember. Uh, <laughs> Now, it's not under your purview, but the rain tax we hear so much about. Uh, are you involved at all with that, except uh, receiving a bill? No, the water district yeah. is not. The sewer district mm -hmm. obviously took it under their wing and yeah. formed a separate entity, legal entity, but they administered out of their office. And you know, you know people, people get upset about that, and rightfully so, but always realize it is a mandate from the federal government that uh, certain entities have to have this in place. It's not a choice. It's a requirement. Mm -hmm. So if you're upset with it, go to Washington and mm -hmm. express your views. Talk to your congressman or yeah, senator. Yeah, right. And I don't think people really yeah. understand yeah. that. I mean, from the outrage <laughs> that you see, you know, on social media, wherever, um, you know, what about this rain tax? Yeah. So. It's, it's one more regulation that's imposed upon us from those who aren't even in our community. Yeah. Uh, Jim, I, uh, a fascinating part of our water is the, the growth of the Potomac River uh, as a major source of supply. Not too long ago, uh, 2 million gallons a day was the, the sealant, and now we're talking around 10 million, possibly even up to 12 million. Uh, that's in addition to our more traditional supply sources such as wells and and the, and the like uh are they, these are two major sources of water are they not the various wells or various springs yes they are admiral but the uh the the one important variable that this community should be uh, involved on understand is that the river is the bread and butter yes that is a drought resistant source of supply it is the one variable that will allow our community to grow as large as we want you can always build pumps, plants, and pipes, but you create, can't create what doesn't exist. And fortunately, we have water. We have the river. It's all the means of taking it out, treating it, and being able to distribute. That is, and those things you can control as long as you have the water. 
So yeah. you you made reference to the drought. Uh, well, you used the word. So um, obviously, it's. I, I assume we're still in a drought situation, but obviously not as bad as some other places, even in West Virginia. But it's so odd to go out and see just how green everything is at this time of year. And as I was driving in, you know, folks, lawn people were out there getting ready to, to mow. And, and I don't know, the Admiral probably, um, as you were preparing for the pig roast that is not to be, yeah, yeah. I'm sure you were out mowing years in the past. But generally speaking, this time of year is, is pretty doggone dry, don't you think? Well, yeah. I spent all day yesterday mowing. So uh, it, yeah. It's just, yeah, it's crazy. Well, um, we're okay. We're, uh, we're still categorized as a moderate drought, I believe. But yeah. our groundwater supply is in fine shape for this time of year. So we have no concerns this year. As long <laughs> as we have a decent winter, we won't be here next year expressing concerns about. I'll uh, bet we water. will be. <laughs> yeah. And if we are, we'll make sure Maria's here so the rain yeah. comes. So the rain comes. I'm the rainmaker. <laughs> she's, yeah. the, she's the divining rod right there. <laughs> yeah. Something. Yeah. yeah. So another interesting thing that I, I mm -hmm. will share this morning is uh, <clears throat> we keep getting uh, inquiries from data centers. And we all know about the uh, political interests of data centers out near Washington and their concerns here and there. But one of the variables that data centers always used to come with is a large water usage. They used it for cooling. Well, they've come to realize that that is not a sustainable and always available uh, variable in the cooling process, so they've realized they need energy, electricity, and go through the standard operations of compressors and, and air conditioning, which is great. And we've had quite a few inquiries, and I, I personally think they're a wonderful asset to a community because they bring a tremendous amount of tax base and they don't bring a lot of people and other ancillary things. Uh, but they need energy. And the interesting thing that is occurring, and I've kind of found out in conversations with these folks, is that they're actually interested in being involved in the production of the energy. We've actually had people come before us who may be related to uh, Microsoft. And if you read recently, Bill Gates is investing in Three Mile Island to restore it to its capacity for nuclear, you know, nuclear power plant for production of energy because all of this advanced, uh, artificial intelligence and all this data that we constantly, every one of us, as we speak here today, is being recorded forever, needs a place to be. And these data centers, they're coming, they're in demand, and we may be the beneficiary of them if that's what people want. Uh, so it's just an interesting development that's happening. Okay, uh, tie, the, uh, tie the knot for us. Uh, uh, as far as development of energy, are we talking about uh, uh, pocket nuclear plants? Have you have they gotten to that stage? I I don't have any personal involvement yeah. in that, Admiral. But I believe that that, as a, on a personal note, that that is something that I hope the state of West Virginia will embrace, and I hope we become the data center capital of the east coast if we want to see some economic opportunity come to this this state and bring some value to the people that live here but it no longer they no longer use the water as they did before have they started recirculating is that well the, they, they just use a closed loop compression system yeah. just like you would to heat your house yeah, or cool your house sure, yeah. same idea and but it requires a high volume of electricity in order to, for those facilities to work and they are willing and they yeah. when they sit down with you they are willing to invest in the electrical system in order to improve it in an expeditious manner so that they can be positioned to build these facilities to meet the needs of our community, one, our society. One of the new businesses that is will be coming is CMC, the, uh, uh, the commercial, uh, metals. commercial metals. Yeah, They initially were going to use a lot of water. Has that been addressed? Are they still making the massive demands for water? Yes, they are. They, uh, it's, it's been a, a, a waffling situation back and forth. We were, we were optimistic that they may use the effluent from the nearby wastewater facility in order to, for their cooling purposes because yes. they, they produce a product that requires a lot of energy, a lot of heat, and apparently they need to cool it at some point in the process in order to make it mm -hmm. to the desired outcome. Well, we, 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 we haven't got there, and apparently now they're saying they're going to use our water, which is a uh, 
it's that challenge when that plant is built and the capacity is there yeah. relative to the timeline in which they want to come on. Now we may be able, we'll get going. We we said we can do it. We will. How much water do they need? Well, they've uh, they've said that when they're up to a full capacity, it's six hundred thousand gallons a day. Which is six, and you pull out how much from the river every day? We. We can treat uh, six million a day up at the plant right now, and That's we're going to ten million a day with our upgraded facility. So six to ten percent of your water will go toward what they need. Yeah. And and P and G, which is also another big user, what is their amount per day? Would you say they use a million gallons a day? So between the two of them. That's a lot of capacity, which is which is fine if it brings value to the community, and that's wonderful, yeah. and we want to be there to support it if that's what the folks want. All fresh water, or it has to be circulated? I'm sorry, is it recirculating water? Or no, no. I, as, it's 600,000 gal 600, gallons a day, and the, probably a lot of it just gets uh, dissipated as it's cooled and into the atmosphere as a moisture. Jim, good to see you again. Thank you, Rob. Always a pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you for the much. information. Good stuff. Jim Ouellette, Executive Director of the Public Service Water District, as we take our uh, first break of the 